Okay, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, our second session today, or our second presentation, I guess. Um, Jack Abapul and um, Andrew Lukoshko, uh, who will, will hopefully reappear on the screen, uh, will be presenting about LFH. Just a reminder that there is a Q&A tab in, uh, in Hopin, so if you wanna ask your questions there. Um, and otherwise, uh, Jack, go ahead. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks everyone. So let me just uh, share the screen. Oh, there he is. And then I'm going to, I hope if I present that it will actually show this to everyone. Everyone see that? Yeah, there we go. All right, cool. All right. Hey, everyone. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> so, um, uh, we are Alma Linux. Uh, I'm joined by uh, Andrew, who's our OS architect. And of course, uh, I lead our community team. And uh, thanks everyone for joining. It's a great event so far. So now I uh, want to talk a little bit about Elevate. First of all, what is Elevate for those who don't know? Uh, who broke the spell check with the capital L? How does it work? And why should you care? And other important life questions. So what is Elevate? So uh, Elevate is a major version migration tool for the whole uh, EL ecosystem. And yes, that's why the second L is capitalized, which I've had to answer more times than I would like to, because sometimes people just don't get it. But uh, anyway, we announced on October 21st. Um, it's based off of Red Hat's Leap framework, which I'll talk about uh, a little bit. And um, you can take a look at the, uh, those two repositories to see sort of the upstream of uh, how we were able to pull this off. Uh, currently, we support 7.x to any 8x migration. Um, we support upgrading from uh, CentOS and from Oracle. And uh, we support a few different uh, target OSs, uh, us, of course, CentOS Stream, Oracle Linux. And I heard there's this obscure project called Rocky Linux. We support them too. Um, and yeah, so uh, we, we'd like to increase that uh, target OS list as well. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about, more about that later on. So aside from just the... Um, <clears throat> like the, the changes um, or the Leap application. Um, also, uh, Elevate includes an Apache licensed metadata library, and I'll talk about why that's important, and also something that we call the package evolution service. Um, so uh, why, did, why did we do this? I'll talk about all those things again um, uh, as we get there. Uh, so I just want to move along. Um, so why did we do this? Well, first... Uh, People have always wanted it, and people have always kind of asked, is there a way to go between major versions? And there really never was, so we wanted to provide the solution for the community. Um, <clears throat> we also wanted to uplift the whole ecosystem and have a project that potentially all rebuilds can work on together. Uh, I think it's important to have kind of those touch points where you know we all have something that we can contribute to, and uh, it's just a win for the community all around uh, to see uh, everyone working together nicely. Uh, we also wanted to enhance an upstream project. So Leap has some limitations, which we wanted to hopefully overcome and help change sort of the structure of, uh, you know, how it was architected um, in order to, to, to become like a more, a broader project. <clears throat> um, also, I think it'll help prevent um, other EOL dustups. So just the fact that you can kind of like seamlessly move between different versions makes it kind of like a moot point if one decides to bite the dust because you don't really, you know, I mean, like it's, it's a big deal, but it's not really that big of a deal anymore because you can just move and, you know, hopefully people won't get as angry as they've gotten about uh, what happened with eight. And then um, also, um, we kind of viewed this as like a potential path for, you know, uh, first of all, uh, maintainers and then also uh, ISVs and application vendors. Um, you know, they can supply their own 
metadata sets for their applications because maintainers know that and, and the packagers know their applications best. And so they're the ones that can kind of put the rules in place for how stuff moves between different distributions. And so we figured that, you know, this is a really great way to get ISVs and application vendors and maintainers um, <clears throat> to all kind of work together to make the experience just a, a very smooth one um, for their customers. And then, you know, they can, they can offer that as an option. Or if a customer comes in and says, hey, you know, we're planning on upgrading, um, you know, what do we do with your application? Well, we've already contributed the metadata, so all you need to do is is run the toolkit, and then um, it'll be updated for you. So, a quick rundown of the process. Um, first of all, backup and and or snapshot. Uh, that goes without saying. Um, you're making major system changes. Um, don't be foolish. I guess uh, you know just in case. Uh, but then you know you could YOLO it. Uh, I've done it myself a few times. Um, with good results too, um, but I don't suggest it. Uh, uh, second, you're going to want to update your uh, C7 system and reboot. Also note, like a lot of people ask, is this a live migration? No, this is not a live migration. You're going to need to reboot several times. Um, <clears throat> then uh, you're going to want to grab the Elevate release package and the Elevate data slash distro um, from uh, our Elevate repository. Um, then once you have that in place, you basically run Leap pre-upgrade and it's gonna let you, it, so the Leap pre-upgrade basically scans the system and takes a look at, you know, stuff like what kernel modules kernel modules are there, um, you know, any uh, problematic like PCI IDs and stuff like that. And then um, it'll spit out this report and then you should look at that report and make sure everything looks clean um, once you resolve any issues that are there, um, you can just run leap upgrade and, uh, it'll run its magic and then it'll actually generate, um, a new, uh, init RAMFS for you. And then you'll want to boot into that init RAMFS and then it'll actually do the upgrade from within that init RAMFS environment. Um, and then once it's done, um, it'll ask you to reboot. And then hopefully it worked its magic and you just log in and cat Etsy OS release. And then you have, uh, uh, you've upgraded to the newest uh, version of the operating system. So how do you do that? Oh. Okay. So um, what we did in order to make this happen, um, First, uh, Leap checks RPM signatures, and so it didn't check CentOS 7 um, uh, uh, key uh, uh, signatures uh, on the packages. So we number one, we had to add that mechanism. Um, we had to fix the source OS version detection to recognize minor versions because um, it, you know, uh, CentOS uh, doesn't like spit out the minor version for you. So that was uh, an issue there. Um, we fixed the CentOS version detection in the uh, Dracon actor because uh, Leap expects minor versions. Well, I, I, I spoke, I guess I was talking about the, uh, I lost myself there for a second. But yeah, so we basically had to make a lot of changes to how it detected versions and the signatures. And also we had to add CentOS 7.9 as a valid source for migration. Um, because it wasn't in there and also make sure that uh, uh, RHSM is disabled by default. Um, now, one thing that we want to make clear, we don't want to maintain this as a leap fork. Um, the goal is to merge everything upstream. We're actually very in touch with uh, Peter, who's the upstream maintainer, um, trying to work on, you know, architecturally, how is this going to look going forward? Because, of course, there's work being done now um, for going from eight to nine. So that needs to be taken into consideration too. So uh, anyway, basically this is like the Dracut uh, version detection change. I mean, it, this was like really, really minimal. Like you see here, it's just basically uh, a change to one uh, regex, but um, there was like a bunch of this stuff all over the place. And basically this is what fit on a slide. So that's why I decided to put this here. 
So uh, what files does Elevate and Leap use? So <clears throat> there's a Leap Upgrade Repositories repo, which uh, defines the repositories of the target OS, um, which it's, of course, going to pull down packages from. Um, there's the pesevents.json file, and that's the package evolution data. So I'll talk about this on the next slide, but basically packages evolve between different versions of the distribution. And that is the key file that kind of defines how that works. <clears throat> um, uh, repo map.csv. So it's uh, uh, basically a repo mapping between the source and target OS, um, unsupported drivers um, for kernel modules that are going to be uh, not available in your uh, new OS, which were available in your current one, and also a file that uh, holds the unsupported PCI IDs. So the PS events configuration file. Um, <clears throat> this basically contains the info on how the packages evolve, right? So evolution of packages um, encompasses a few primitives, right? Um, you can have a package be present. You can have a package be removed. For example, empathy. Um, you can have a package that was deprecated. You can have a package that was replaced. So shot well, replaced, GNOME photos. Um, you can have packages that were split. Um, like we see here with some of the uh, Psycho PG uh, stuff was split into Python 2 and Python 3. Um, sometimes packages get merged. So uh, strace and strace32 into strace. Um, packages were moved to a different repo and uh, packages could have uh, been renamed. So basically using these primitives, it lets Leap um, calculate a bunch of stuff. And really what it is, it's really kind of like a smarter upgrade than just like a DNF upgrade, um, just with a lot more uh, detail and a lot more data. Um, and now the biggest issue with this is that um, Red Hat has a PES events.json, um, which is available under a non-free license um, uh, under a subscription. So um, we were not able to use any of that data because obviously it's proprietary license and, um, you know, it's just, it's not the right thing to do. So what we did is we put together the package evolution service. Sorry, Pokemon not included. Um, what is the package evolution service? So uh, first of all, it's at Um it's, it, We launched it so that we can create and maintain um, that JSON uh, data under an Apache 2.0 license. So now anyone can uh, contribute to that and anyone can use it freely. Anyone can modify it. Um, it allows, you know, view, create, edit, upload, of package data. Yes, you can upload package data, data there too. Uh, if I get a chance, I'll, I'll show that off a little bit. Um, and it allows everyone to create their own data set for packages. So you can basically go in there and um, define like a package set. And then uh, you can say like, I'm going from this OS to this OS and have it dump out um, all the JSON that you need for that PES events file. Um, and actually, the uh, initial data set that we used was contributed by Oracle. So uh, credit where credit is due. Um, thank you very much um, to them for letting us use it. Um, it was under um, an open license as well. Um, it's not as detailed as uh, some of the Red Hat data, but um, hopefully over time with contributions, um, you know, and maybe one day even Red Hat themselves would like to contribute there and, and just, you know, make that data set freely available. So this is um, what the interface uh, looks like. Um, you, you can uh, do like a bulk upload of data if you want. Um, you could dump that uh, PES events.json. Um, you can add actions. Uh, you can list actions and you can see a list of uh all the users registered on the system. Uh, there are not that many there now because most people have not contributed back any uh, metadata. I mean, they're just using it to do migrations. Um, so, uh, you know, hopefully that'll grow as well. And then you can take a look at the actions history and just see 
uh, you know, like what's what's been going on in there and, and how the actual data set has changed over over time. So this is kind of how you uh, dump that file. So you can come in and you say, like, this is my source OS. This is my target OS. Um, uh, GitHub org, what, that's just there for now. And then just dump it out. Um, actually, what I will do is let me... Um, I actually have it open here. So uh, I just want to show everyone um, what the data kind of looks like. And it's really, really simple. So we spoke before about uh, Shotwell uh, replacing GNOME photos. So here's your in package set. Here's your out package set. Um, this is the, the primitive of how the package was, um, uh, uh, you know, evolved between, um, between releases. And then if you go in here, um, you know, if you see like, so this is saying like source OS 7.7, source OS 8.0, uh, source is generic, target is generic. You give it the list of arches and then um, for the package set, um, you give it the package, you give it the repo and then you can, it supports uh, modules too. So you give it the module name, the module stream, of course here, there are none. So we just leave that out and then you define the out package set. So um, this is cool because anyone can come in and anyone can basically add the metadata here, right? So you can, if you maintain a package and you want to define uh, the metadata for your package so that users of your package uh, will have uh, a better time uh, moving it between versions, you can come in here and just define all of that and then um, it'll get saved. And then you can take a look at the action history so it's basically like modifying and creating a bunch of data that um, we're working with. Uh, I think this was uh, on uh, January 25th. So anyway, that's what the interface looks like. So now um, if we come back here, um, I actually, uh, we, so we, the, the, it's not a quick process. It does take time depending on how much is on the system um, and depending on just the complexity of everything that needs to happen. It can take, you know, upwards of an hour. Um, so we did put together a video, um, which uh, Sonia, who's another, he, she's uh, on our docs team. Uh, she actually documented. And so uh, let's play that video. It's condensed down to about four minutes and then you'll be able to see um, the process happen uh, and go from a seven to an eight. Hello everyone, my name is Sophia. In this video, I'm going to show you how to migrate from CentOS 7 to Alma Linux 8 using the Leap 2 and data from the Elevate project. First of all, let's install Leap Upgrade and Leap Data in the Linux packages. Leap Data packages define what system the migration is to. Besides on the Linux, we can migrate to CentOS 2.8, Oracle Linux, and Rocky Linux. The next step is to check if the current system is prepared for migration. You need to launch the pre upgrade for this. It will check that you have the latest CentOS version, there is no unsupported hardware or software, and system settings are compatible with the next major operation system release. If CentOS doesn't match some requirements by default, you can use a migration guide that contains the most popular issues you may have during this step. When Leap Upgrade shows that the system is ready to proceed with migration, you can use the next step, which is Leap Upgrade. All the packages needed for migration are downloaded during this step.
You can see that a special operation system image is created. It will be used for migration. Now it is all set to reboot and do the upgrade. There will be a new option in the bootloader after reboot. Elevate upgrade in each one of us. It will be automatically booted. You can see packages and configuration updates running. Now the system automatically restarts to perform Linux reliably. After this process is completed, the system will restart one more time. So the new system just put it. Let's make sure that it is on the Linux 8. That's all for now. Thank you for your attention. Hello everyone. All right, so mind blown. <laughs> um, okay, so what are the current problems uh, and future of Elevate? So, um, so first of all, Leap was developed to upgrade RHEL uh, and not to support any external repos like Apple, um, which is a problem because a lot of people are running uh, Apple. So um, a couple of things need to happen. First of all, um, we need to... Um, figure out a way to add repos uh pgp fingerprints because right now it's all hard coded in the code so um it's you know it's it's not really scalable um if we want to support um other repositories um uh also to implement um like a drop-in uh config directory for target os and ps events um Again, it's just ways to make it more scalable um, to be able to support more. Um, right now, again, a lot of this stuff is like hard coded in the code. So it makes it really difficult to uh, change anything there or add anything there. Um, and there's there's no mechanism for it to, um, you know, read from an external configuration file um, all the info uh, that you want your 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 source, your target, uh, repositories, all that stuff. Um, also to uh, detect popular repos and create configuration files for them. Um, th this is really uh, hard, especially with something uh, on the scale of Apple, because there's just so much there that um, it's not really feasible for, you know, one person or a few people to try to do it. Um, it's really needs to be something where maybe some of the maintainers are involved, um, the, the package maintainers, um, because uh, it'll it's that's the only way to make it scalable, I think, basically. Um, also, Leap doesn't support CentOS natively. 
So um, we that was part of the hacking that we did on it. So we actually started talking um, with the Leap maintainers um, a really long time ago. And uh, basically, uh, it's up to Red Hat to support CentOS in Leap. Um, we understand that it's something that, you know, they view they view as part of the value proposition, which is definitely understandable. Uh, you know, and I we 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 are working with them, at least the maintainers of Leap to kind of figure out how to architect um, the whole thing or re-architect the whole thing. Um, but again, that needs to align with Red Hat's uh, expectations and, you know, basically uh, uh, what Red Hat believes the vision for it moving forward is. Um, so for the future, um, right now, we only support seven to eight. Um, support for eight to nine is coming. Uh, we've also been considering doing like something for six because there are a lot of people out there running six and that's very, very problematic. And so maybe we could do like a six to seven and then a seven to eight um, uh, for the future. Um, more metadata, like uh, I spoke about, uh, just for for the packages that we support now themselves and also hopefully Apple support because a lot of times the people that are, are coming into our channel and just asking for help um, are people that have, you know, Apple installed and um, it just won't work. So some resources um, and hopefully uh, I'll post the slides up somewhere so you can link to them. And this will be in the recording too, if anyone wants to reference them. Uh, so we have our Elevate site. Um, we have our uh, Leap repository. Uh, the fork of the upstream uh, that's there. And you can see the changes that we made there in the different branches. Um, we have <clears throat> a whole section on our wiki about Elevate. Um, we have um, uh, migration SIG uh, as well, if people want to join. And then we also have a channel on our chat that you can join um, if you're interested in like any of the metadata or if you're doing a migration and have questions or if you want to do a migration and have some questions um, so you can uh, feel free to join there and uh, people are around to kind of help with all that stuff. Um, and I guess that's it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that's our Twitter handle. You can email us uh, hello at almalinux.org or myself, which is jack at almalinux.org, andrew at almalinux.org. Um, you can join our chat. We have our forums, Reddit, um, and really wherever else you guys want to find us. We're also on IRC, um, uh, on Libera, on uh, Pound Alma Linux, uh, if you guys want to join us there. Um, and we're bridging a few of the other channels uh, into Libera uh, as well over the next few days because um, people have asked for it. And uh, that's it. I guess we can we can open it up to Q&A. And I will stop sharing All right. Um, so let's go to the Q and A. Can you bridge your Mattermost to Matrix? It is already bridged to Matrix. Um, the info should be on the wiki. Um. Let me see. Any chance Elevate will support RHEL as a target OS anytime soon? So the Leap itself actually supports um, RHEL as a target OS. Um, I guess de depending on how Red Hat um, wants to take this for the future, um, I guess we potentially can. Um, but uh, that's really kind of, I think, more of an upstream decision uh, especially around uh, how, like, the mechanisms of the actual code doing the upgrade. Um, stream 8 to stream 9, when? <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> you uh, I don't really know. I think, I think it's possible uh, because, uh, you know, uh, right now, Leap uh, um, maintainers are working on support uh, 
to migrate from eight to nine. So I think it's possible. We will uh, definitely try it. Yep. And we've been playing around with some eight to nine stuff already um, as well. Um, uh, Apache seems a bit odd for package evolution data. Is there any patent where you so the believe it or not, Leap itself is under that same license. So uh, I think that's where the motivation for uh, for that license came from. Uh, also, original Oracle data is released yeah. uh, also under right. Apache right. license. Yeah. And I think that's why Oracle chose that license as well. Um, how are you mapping particular, particular modularity slash app streams? Not sure. Can you elaborate a little bit more? I think it was Jack. Hey, sorry. <laughs> Sensitive mouse. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, the question is about how, how you do migrations from non-modular to modular and such. Andrew. Uh, you know, so, uh, right now migrations um, are done for uh, from non-modular to default uh, modules that uh, are enabled by default. So you will have uh, Nginx uh, 1.14, for example, by default. Uh, any chance you would contribute to the package evolution service in the future? It could help migrate users to RHEL. Um, yeah, we do contribute to the package evolution service. Um, and we would love to help people migrate to RHEL if that's, uh, if upstream wanted to help us do it. Um, yeah. So what do you, what did you mean? CentOS didn't provide the point release. So, so yes, it's an, it's in LSB release, but it doesn't spit it out as part of Etsy OS release, which is what leap uh, checks. Anybody can edit the metadata for any package. So I can say that Calse replaces kernel core and Alma 8. So you want to talk about that, Andrew, a little bit about how that works? Uh, you know, you, you can't uh, change Alma Linux data set because you are not in Alma Linux team, I believe. Uh, yeah. So you can have your own data set where uh, Calse requests kernel uh, core and you can try to migrate, but uh, um, I don't think yeah. <laughs> you will be fine. Yeah, that was that was part of why we had the um, uh, uh, GitHub org um, on the on the PS page because basically you can edit the data set that you have permission for, so um, you cannot uh, <laughs> you cannot have Calse replace kernel core and Alma. We can say that, but we probably won't. Um, does it handle breaking configuration changes? Yes, uh, leave uh, check for some uh, changes and uh, on the break uh, state, uh, you uh, leap will ask you to change something. It, it's possible. And then we another question. So tossing this out there, any thoughts for a Sun live update scenario for Elevate? Uh, that that is a very good question. Um, it's uh, it'll be hard to do now, um, but it's definitely something. You know, doing like a live update or a live migration would be great. Um, you know, it's it's difficult. I mean, it needs it's it's been. You know, we've thought about it. Um, it's just you know, like way above everyone's head right now. So 
I think um, if that does happen, it'll be a ways down the road. But again, if anyone wants to contribute that, I mean, we certainly, you know, it's kind of complex though, because, well, for uh, you can only imagine. Um, is it possible to micro to migrate from CentOS Stream Eight to Alma Linux Eight? So, um, not really, because the issue is that Stream Eight is actually uh, tracking ahead of Alma Eight. So it's actually not an upgrade. It would be a downgrade. And I think those are all the questions. Let's check in the... Uh... Yeah, David, so you'd probably need to pull, like, everything into RAM and then, like, do a change and then dump everything back in. But that's kind of crazy. So, uh, Alex is asking, so there's an ACL per OS, not per package. I believe it's per OS and then per package too, right, uh, Andrew? Yes, it is. Yeah. So I think that's really kind of it for now. Um, if anyone has any more questions, I'm glad to answer them in the hallway. Um, you can, of course, email us um, or get at us on the chat or whatever it is. But uh, I guess that's it from us uh thank you guys so much and we hope that uh you know we hope that um community members will want to contribute and we hope that we can work together on this um with other um downstream rebuilds um and also with red hat as well so um there's a lot of conversation going on around it um uh with red hat too and the leap maintainer peter so um uh, yeah, I'm, I, I hope that this will continue to be a very useful tool uh, for a long time to come. Great. Thank you, Jack and Andrew. Um, our next talk will be in uh, oh, about 19 minutes. So once again, if you want to hang out in the hallway track or just go take a break, we'll see you all back in 19 minutes. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for kind words in chat, actually. Yeah, thanks everybody.